Good afternoon-ish redesigners. It's CC from CC Restyled. And today we are going to be using um, Redesign with Prima Decor Wax. Um, we're gonna be using Eternal, which is gold, but it comes in, um, I don't know, a dozen or so really pretty shimmery or metallic colors like um, Meteor Showers, which is like a copper and element, I believe is a, like a bronze is copperish and silver and iridescent, all the fun metallics and things. But today we're gonna to be using um, Eternal, good old Eternal, of which I have three cans that are almost empty. <laughs> three cans down to the very last. And so we're gonna stretch it. It's gonna go far. I doubt I even have to use more than one almost empty can. So a little can goes a long, long way. Um, even when you use it like uh, I do on everything. So um, Decor Wax from Redesign with Prima, they are oil-based uh, waxes. And so generally when I use them, I seal first. You don't have to, you can let them dry completely or cure completely, preferably overnight, and then you can seal after that. But I usually do them as a last step as they are permanent. Um, they're fade proof, permanent, and beautiful. So what we're working on today is I have a set of three tables. I've got these um, um, two little end tables here for a client. And then I've also got, oh gosh, what's going on with me? Over here, over here. <laughs> I've got this little uh, coffee table here too. So as you can see, I have painted and I did this little subtle stencil um, on my insides or the tops of my tables. So um, I'd use caviar from Dixie Belle and then on the middle I used Midnight Sky and I blended it around the edges. And then I did caviar, which is the black black, in my stenciling. So I don't know, hopefully, oh, my bad. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. I don't know if um, it's coming through. It's supposed to be really subtle. Um, and then I've sealed the top with two coats of Gator Hide. You can seal with your preferred water-based sealer, but um, I like to use Gator Hide, especially on tabletops. So this is the um, stencil that I used. It's a large stencil from Redesign with Prima. I don't remember the name of it, as usual. I mean, you're probably used to that by now, me not remembering the names of them. But anyways, this is it. Isn't it pretty? It's pretty, this little Moroccan kind of shape with the little flowers in the center. So um, here is my little table, number one, little table number one. You can see probably, hopefully, it's got the same treatment, that little subtle ghosting in the center, uh, that stencil. And I'm just going to, okay, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start finishing our tables with the gilding wax. So like I said, I've sealed the top in two coats of gator hide. The, bottom, um, the bottoms are sealed in just one coat of gator hide. <clears throat> and then I have actually sprayed the little feet with a gold spray, a uh, gilding spray. So there's that, that's how far we've gotten. Oh, and I added some little, uh, let's see, um, some little molds, little molds. This one's called, uh, let me, let me see if I can show you. Tilden Flourish, they're redesigned with Prima Molds. I made with resin. See the little guys here? Aren't they pretty? One, one on each side of each table. So each on the opposite side is the same molds there. So we're gonna gild these. We're gonna add some little stick and style um, stencil in uh, Eternal, with our Eternal gilding wax, and um, or decor wax. We're gonna, just gonna add little peaks of the stencil here and there so that you can you know, so we just, we want a lot of bling, okay? Some bling, bling. Bling, bling, like classy but borderline uh, gaudy. That's kind of my, my jam. Classy, borderline, borderline too much. Well, it is too much in some people's opinion, but you know, to each her own or his own or whatever. So to start, I'm going to do um, some stenciling on the top with the Eternal. And, you don't have to do this, and you can use a completely different stencil if you want, but I'm going to line up my stencil as best I can with the ghosted stencil that's already on there. Um, the reason I wanna do that is just because I want it to look cohesive, like it's the same pattern, but just kind of, you know, maybe worn off in some spots or, or not worn off in some spots, does that make sense? 
So I'm just lining it up as best as I can. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's not too hard to line it up and get it as close as you can to perfecto. So there we go. So I've got it all lined up with um, my ghosted stencil. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Holla, I will check them periodically and we will uh, try to get them answered, okay? So let's go ahead and grab our eternal. This is our eternal gold I just showed you. If you're just hopping on, um, redesign with Prima Decor Wax and Eternal. Look how sad and empty that little tin is looking. I've got three of these that are all sad and empty and um, almost gone. So we'll see. We probably will only end up using one of them for all three tables. That's how far that this decor wax stretches. <sighs> and there's iridescent decor waxes, um, Milky Way and Blue Ice iridescent. If you want a more subtle shimmer or a subtle look, um, to finish your piece with. Um, I have got a French tip brush here. This one is from Dixie Belle, but you can use any wax brush or, um, I like to use a French tip that's big fat, you know, French tip or round or let's see. I've also got mm, this little stencil brush here, the round guy, but I like the French tip because, um, I want my stencil to look a little bit aged, a little worn. And so that French tip helps to feather out the edges. Um, so that's why I chose this brush. So I'm just going to get a little dusting of the decor wax on my brush and, uh, similar to applying makeup, you know, you want it on there, but you don't, you know, usually tap off the excess before you touch it to your face. You know, um, I mean, I guess, I don't know people who wear makeup. I don't need to wear makeup. See, I'm just kidding. I woke up like this. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I had to put my eyelashes on and do and make my eyebrows, but here is where we're going to tap, you know, kind of wipe the excess off on the edge. And I'm going to start on, um, you know, the corner here. And I'm just going to kind of tap on um, my, oh, can you see? Can you see? I'm just going to tap on gently. Fill in some parts of the stencil. I'm not going to fill in the whole stencil because if I was filling in the whole stencil, then it would cover up my ghosted stencil stencil or subtle stencil and you know why would I want to do that why would I, why would I want to just cover it all up um so I'm gonna reload a little bit and kind of dab 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 and so I just want touches of the gold in some corners you can dab you can circle emotion like this I try to dab um Generally, when you're using decor wax to stencil, it, you know, since it's fairly dry, it's not liquidy like paint and gloopy. So um, it doesn't tend to, you know, bleed underneath too much. So, you know, it's a little easier and more crisp than paint stenciling for the most part. But I did hold my stencil in place with some painter's tape. Usually I put just a little bit of, of um, I spray a little bit of spray adhesive on the back and let it dry to attack. And that's when, you know, then I use my stencils, but I did not this time, um, mostly because I realized when I went to spray the back of this that I was out of spray adhesive. So that's why I didn't this time, but I normally do. It helps a lot with the bleed, you know, the, the seepage and bleeding underneath. So, all right, so I am kind of getting to a point where I think I'm just gonna have that little corner there kissed with gold. Now I'm going to go up to this little opposite corner here and I'm going to do this opposite corner in the gold You see a little piece of my stencil that did not get popped out uh, before I, oh, um, you know, used it, but that's okay. It's going to pop that little piece out. Maybe. Oh gosh. Didn't want to come out. Okay. Reload. And now you want a more of a organic, Organic shape, you know, I'm just kind of doing a little bit of the corner here a little bit of the corner here Maybe a little, you know, maybe a little splotch somewhere in here You want it to look very organic very natural like it just kind of aged that way on its own naturally Okay, like if you you know, you don't want it to look too Too you don't want it to look too perfect. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm just kind of going wherever willy-nilly all over the place kind of wherever I feel like it would age and just be, you know, showing bits of my gold through. 
I guess is the best way to describe it. <laughs> Do you see, can you see how my French tip brush feathers out the edges of my, my stenciling here? You'll see it when I pull it up for sure, but do you see right there how it just feathers out the edges? It doesn't leave a harsh line. So that helps it to look more like natural aging rather than, um, oh, she plopped some gold stenciling on the top of that table. You know what I mean? So um, that, that is just why I use the French tip or, you know, any, your favorite wax brush is fine too, like I said. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep, keep on at it. I want a li little heavier in this corner here. I like to usually have like one heavier corner and then one lighter corner when I'm doing something like this. Um, if you have like corners with the exact same coverage, it looks a little too perfect, um, you know, a little too forced in my opinion. So um, heavier on, on one corner and lighter on the other, I think is just a nice little touch. So here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say, wait, maybe a little bit more right here. I'm gonna go ahead and say that's that's quite enough of that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. And if you're just hopping on and you missed the beginning, I'm I'm gilding wax, gilding waxing these tables. The top, I'm doing a little stenciling. Um, and I did I did um, seal these first, okay? If you wanted to seal after your gilding wax, you want to um, wait for it to be completely cured, which is preferably overnight. These these decor waxes, they do cure quickly, but um, they cure quickly, but not, you know, not, not immediately. So you wanna give them at least overnight, so. Okay, I think, looking at this now, I think I might want, well, let me see. I think I might want to do a little bit more, um, nah, maybe a little bit more just right there. Just right there, just a little tiny bit in the corner. I know, you're like, that's enough. I can't help myself. Um, let me just put this right here, where it was. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit connecting that. I just wanna connect those two chunks that I had. I think that will look best. So although my wax is not completely dry, it dries quick enough that I can just lay the stencil right back over it, and I'm okay with that. So let me, get, let me connect those two little blobs. You know, sometimes you're just feeling it, and sometimes you're like, nah, this will, this will have me feeling it, I think. All right, so now I pull up. I like to pull up, up and out. There we go, I'm much happier with that. So see how it's kind of aged looking? You got a very, you know, not quite distressed, but, um, and when it's dry, I'll wipe off all those little gilding wax, like dust that kind of is left over. And you can still see the subtle stencil, see through, I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but anyway, so that's that. So now I'm going to go ahead and do, um, my stick and style. So let me, let's see how I'm going to do this. Stick and style stencil is a, um, it's, Stencils that come on rolls and they are adhesive. They are from Redesign with Prima. They are um, not only reusable, but they're also disposable. So, you know, you can cut a piece of your stencil if you wish and use it for an entire project or entire set of tables or what, what have you. And then um, you can pitch them or you can just hang them up on something, stick them up on something and keep them. Let me show you those. Um, today I'm going to be using, come over here, over here, over here, okay. <laughs> today I'm going to be using Calypso Lattice Stick and Style Stencil. This one's my favorite, besides Cheetah, you know, but um, my client did not request Cheetah on this, so we're going to use Calypso, which is this, oh, we can't see it because of my paint, huh. Calypso Lattice is this really cool, really pretty pattern with... It kind of goes with everything, I think. So I use this an awful lot, an awful lot. It's about four inches tall and it's sticky, but it's not so sticky that it'll pull up your paint. Um, if you've prepped well, um, it should not pull up your paint at all. I've never had it pull up my paint. Um, let's see, we're gonna use it down here on the, um, let's see, how are you gonna see that? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. There you go. Let me get a little, let me get a little something to prop this up. Oh, look, I'm gonna use my other decor waxes to prop this up so you can see it. How genius is that? Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Can you see it now? All right, so see these little corners here on each side of the moldings? We're just gonna do a little kiss of stencil in each of the corners. And then on each side, we'll do, you know, a little bit of this stick and style stencil. So I'm just gonna cut the amount that I need. So I'm gonna cut approximately this much. Okay, so I'm just gonna stick it right there. Um, I'm not gonna use my French tip. It's a little big for this area. So I'm gonna use my little stencil brush. It's just a stencil brush. You can get them at the craft store or wherever you get your brushes, usually. Craft store, Amazon, whatever. Okay, so I'm just gonna do like a little kind of, um, let's see, like little like corner angle here, like a little triangle almost in the bottom. And I'm kind of doing circle emotions. And the round brush, again, will give it like a more organic edge, okay? Like a faded off edge rather than a harsh edge, like a regular um, flat brush or, or whatever would. So I got my little corner stencil there. Now I'm gonna, I can reuse this. I can reuse this little thing here. Hey guys, if you're hopping on, say hello. Yes, yes, my favorite. Um, Marta, this is going to be my last step. These waxes dry hard and permanent. Um, so I've already sealed my pieces here and my gilding wax is last. The decor wax is oil-based, dry or cures hard, permanent. Um, you can seal it if you'd like, but you wanna make sure you let it dry or cure at least overnight, in my opinion. It's dry very quickly, but I would let it cure before you put any sort of sealer over it personally. So we're just gonna reuse that bad boy over here. We're gonna kind of mimic that shape like a little bit of a, um, kind of almost like a little triangle in the corner there, okay? Doesn't have to be exactly the same shape. I didn't even re-dip, I didn't even reload my brush with, with wax. I'm using the same, same little uh, dip from earlier when I grabbed that, so. All right, so there we go. So there is the corners with our stick and style. I'm just gonna save this little puppy and we're gonna use it on the other side. But first, I want to do a little bit of, I got this little quarter inch angle brush. You can use a flat or um, a flat or flat angle. I prefer the angle, but quarter inch is the perfect size to paint or gild, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it gild our little moldings here. And in case you missed it, these moldings, they're called Tilden Flourish. See, I remember the name of that. I can't remember the name of anything else, but I remember Tilden Flourish, because I think I like to say it. I think Tilden, I think that's what it's called. Tilden Flourish, yeah. So I am taking my, my decor wax and I'm just kind of like, oh, you know, grazing the tops of my moldings you can get a little crazier with it and you can like paint your whole molding if that makes sense so like get down in there and, and you know like you're painting it but i prefer to just kind of graze the tops and that really brings out to me the dimension um if your gilding wax is a little thick for this or drying up or what have you you can add a little bit of mineral spirits just a little at a time and and um, you know, stir it in with like a palette knife or a plastic spoon or something. And um, then you have a, you know, depending on how much mineral spirits you add, you can have a more liquidy type gilding wax, you know what I mean? You can, you can really add the mineral spirits till you get the consistency that you want. Um, I like to add it and just get it back to like a creamy consistency, but if you want it to be a little more paintable, I guess, for lack of a better term, you can um, add more mineral spirits and voila! It's like painting with gold. It's like you got Midas touch. All right, so we're gonna continue grazing the tops of our molds, our moldings. Grazing the tops of our moldings. Sounds so classy. And let's see, got this one. 
Um, so in molds, I did these, I made the, I cast these molds out of resin. Okay, quick setting resin. And it cures in just a few minutes, so you don't have a whole a lot of open working time. But how, you know, for people like me who, you know, you have to make one, two, three, four. If you have to make lots of molds, um, it makes sense to use a quick setting or you're on a deadline or you're just flat out impatient. Um, the quick setting resin is much more, I've literally never used typical epoxy resin, the, you know, the crystal clear kind for molds because it just takes way too long. I mean, who wants to wait 24 hours to demold? Like, not me, I'm over it by then, you know? So, um, quick setting resin. I like the amazing casting resin. Um, it is pliable to a point, so it dries, it cures hard and rigid. But if you um, demold it, you know, soon after it's set up, it's still a little bit pliable. So if you're going around curves or, you know, um, any kind of curves, I guess, or, you know, a bow front or serpentine front or any kind of curves like that, then you can um, conform your resin molds to match that, which is awesome. Just apply it and then it is you know, it'll set in that fashion, in that shape. Um, I use, for my resin molds, a lot of times, if I am gluing them to bare sanded wood, sometimes I use Gorilla Hot Glue. I only use Gorilla Hot Glue. That's the only brand of hot glue that I use for attaching anything because it works. Um, if I'm attaching it to bare sanded wood, I will use Gorilla Hot Glue because I know it's gonna set and grab into that wood and um, on the back of my resin. However, um, if I'm not, if I'm you know gluing it to something that's painted or you know a previous finish or something that's a little less porous than raw wood, then I will use um, Tight Bond Quick and Thick for resin mold. So a little bit, a little bit of tidbits about molds for you while we finish painting our mold with our gilding wax. So there's that. Now I'm thinking that's not enough. That's not enough because guess what? I like to go a little extra. So we're gonna take our brush and our gilding wax and we're gonna go kind of right up here under, oh, well, let's just kind of trace this little in, uh, border area. I don't know if you can see on the screen how that little border, you know, there's that little uh, routed out area there. Um, and then some, and sometimes I just like to kind of trace almost the outline of my piece with some gilding wax, um, especially if it's not a piece with a whole lot of detail already, you know, incorporated. Um, I like to just trace the edges and define the curves or the shape of my piece. Does that make sense? Just just to define and add a little bit more interest and bling. Um, if it was a piece that was already like heavily carved and crazy ornate, I probably would not do this, but it needs a little bit more love, I think, in this area here. And I'm using my brush, but sometimes I use my finger if it like Ah, it needs just to be smoothed out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like a little feathered out, smoothed out a little bit. I use my finger. So see how I'm not tracing the entire, I'm not tracing the entire curve, okay? I like to like kind of start to trace it and then trail off, which kind of alludes to, it gives your eye, you know, it leads your eye to, to ugh, can't even talk. Leads your eye towards the center. Little focal point there, you know? It's all about visual, you know, what, where's your eye going? Where are the elements you're placing telling the viewer to look? These are all pointing towards the focal point in the center, okay? That's the goal. Should always be a focal point. A lot of people are asked like, how do you decide where to place this or that? Like, how do you know where to put this? That? You'll always define yourself a focal point. So in this instance, it's this center mold and work around that. Every decision you make about el other elements should be with your focal point in mind. I, I see a lot of people that 
a lot of pieces that people just kind of start slapping things on there and even though it may look like I just start slapping things on there that's not what I do <laughs> there's a method to the madness so to find your focal point everything that you add should be calling to that focal point or drawing the eye to that focal point okay see what I'm saying okay so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this way and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut us a long piece of stick and style stencil. So if you um, are just tuning in, we're using a stick and style stencil on the sides or the apron of our piece. We have already done a little bit of stenciling on the top. So just a little bit of aged kind of, you know, kind of looking stenciling, worn I suppose is a better word than aged. Um, and now we're going to do our stick and style, stick and styling around um, the whole apron of this table. And so now it's this side's turn. We're just gonna go ahead and cut us a piece that is the size we need. Boom, boom. Stick and style stencils, I love. They're both reusable and disposable. You can't ask for more. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my little round stencil brush and we're going to um, just kind of do circly motions. Now on the other p on the other side that we just did, you saw I did just two little corners. I did you know the both bottom corners. Okay, this side I don't have a molding on this side. It's lonely, so I'm just gonna kind of pick and choose. Um, I'm not gonna fill in the whole stencil. I wanted to have a little bit of an aged look to match the top. So we're just gonna kind of do our circly motions around town and not quite fill the whole thing in completely. You can if you want to, if that's your jams, go for it. it depends on the look you're going for. Uh, that's not the look I'm going for, so we're just gonna keep it organic. Keep it organic here. Okay, so got some spots filled in, some spots not filled in. I'm gonna pull this up. I'm going to keep this to use on other sides, you know, like the other table that I have there that's the exact same, the, the, the match for this table. I'm gonna use that for, so I'm just sticking it on my tripod here. <laughs> sticking it on my tripod until I go to use it. Okay, so now, like I did on the other side, <sighs> if I can find my little brush, there it is, little brush. There's my little brush, okay? I'm using a quarter, in quarter inch angled flat artist brush okay nothing crazy get it at michael's amazon anywhere anywhere um let's see do i have any questions hello everybody thanks for tuning in thank you for saying hello and i don't see any questions so far so if i miss some i'm sorry i'll go back later and um answer them but i don't see any right now so just like we did on the other side we're gonna go ahead and make our little um oh hint of an outline and you're probably like well she doesn't have a focal point on this side what's the deal well on this side i would say the focal point is really the whole the whole table um we do have a focal point on the molded sides and we are just on this side trying to mimic those other sides you don't have to you can do something totally different if you want but I like consistency, so we're just gonna do a similar type thing and just kinda trail our outline up there, okay? Trail it off. By all means, if you wanna border or outline your whole entire curve, that's totally up to you. This is just what I like to do. There's no right or wrong. I like the effect that it gives when you just kind of hint at it, hint at the border, if that makes sense. Get a little bit here, just a little there, and then I use my finger to trail it off, just like that. Okay, so that's that. That's that side. Super easy. Okay, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so let's go ahead and do our other side here. So, 
This side, we are gonna reuse our piece we already cut off of our stick and style stencil. And see, I've got my moldings here again. You see those? Those look familiar in case you're just hopping on. Um, I made these little additional moldings out of Redesign with Prima molding called Tilden Flourish. Um, so these tables were, you know, the old 90s cherry wood with the shell shape on it. These had those little upside down shells on them. Um, hmm. I don't know that I even liked those when they were in fashion in the 90s. And I love everything about the 90s, but not the shell-shaped tables. So those shell shapes, I just, po I just popped those off with some pliers. I just grabbed them and plopped them off. And they had little, you know, um, wire pieces holding them in, which all you gotta do is take some pliers and pull out those little wire pieces. Easy peasy, okay? Um, if you don't want to remove your little shell shapes, you can just add moldings around them if you want. That would be cool too, I guess. And there we go. So I just did this little corner here. Now I'm going to do this little corner here. Similar shape, but not necessarily matchy-matchy. Little corner, triangle-ish kind of shape there. Boom, 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 boom. And there we go, okay? So that's easy. Now um, I'm gonna save my little piece because we got one more table just like this to do and a coffee table. So coffee table, I'll probably have to cut new, new little sections of stick and style, but you know, whatever. Splitting hairs here. All right, so on my moldings, I'm using Decor Wax in Eternal, which is gold. And I'm just brushing the tops of my moldings. Um, this is probably my favorite part about what I do is the, the just brushing on of the detail with the, with the decor wax because um, it's just so therapeutic and satisfying and to watch it change from barely existing to gold or whatever color you choose is um, very satisfying. And soothing unless you know you're in some crazy loud place with a lot of people but if I'm just by myself and doing this it's very uh, I get in a trance almost doing this and it's fun to watch in uh, time-lapse too if you've ever seen someone I have one video I've done where I, I did a whole table in gilding waxes and I time-lapsed it it's so fun to watch in time-lapse actually I might have a couple videos like that I don't know how to look but you just want to brush it lightly along the top. Like I said earlier, you can paint paint the whole thing in your gilding wax if you want and get all the little crevices and sides and tops. But I like to just, but you know, graze the tops. I think that brings out the most detail. Personally, it's a personal opinion. Oh, got some down in there. That's okay. All right, so we're almost done with that. And then um, we've got one more side to stick and style, I believe, if I can uh, count right. Yeah, one more style to what the One more side to stick and style. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of gold around the top, not a whole lot, because that's awfully big border to just completely rim in gold. So that's not gonna happen. But just like these little curves here where I'm just kind of trailing off my gold see like and if, if it helps you to be more accurate with your finger then by all means I like to use my finger for it um lots but I try to be proper and use a little brush just kind of trail it off with your finger okay and same with this side bring it out Bring it out and around town. Then I just wanna smooth it out and trail it off with my finger. You can do it with your brush too, but I like to use nature's paintbrush, which is my fingers. Just like that. Just like that. Okay, so now we got one more side to stick in style. Boom. And I'm just gonna reuse this, okay? I'm gonna reuse this piece from the other side. 
pouty again, little piece of stick and style. We're gonna stick you right there, line it up, make sure it's straight, make sure it's straight. <laughs> make sure it's straight. I've gotten my stick and styles crooked before and it's very obvious. Um, speaking of which, I have it crooked. Okay, there we go. And I got my little round wax or stencil brush, I mean. And I'm just gonna fill in some little spots, not the whole thing. I want it to look kind of worn, organic kind of fill in shapes. Um, there we go. And see how fast that was because I'm not filling in the whole thing. I'm just leaving a little organic fume. And let's see. Now let's. I'm gonna keep that because I'm gonna use it on my next table. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're just gonna come out. And up here, and kind of trail off, trail off. So I'm coming in from both sides, but sometimes I even will just do the center and go out, or I'll go from one side about three quarters of the way to the other side and trail off. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Okay. Okay, so this is our last side that we are going to gild. And now we're just gonna go, see after I trail this little bugger off here, I'm gonna go around the top just a little bit. So let me um, show you again the top. And raise you up, raise you up just a little bit. Um, let's see, I need a shut towel. Raise you up a little bit. Oops, that way, okay. So now you can see, see this um, border around the top. Okay, around the top here. See that? See, it's kind of a fat border, right? Like, that's a fat border. I am not going to um, fill in the whole border. That's a lot of gilding wax and a lot of time, and I don't think that would look really good. I think it would look really forced, kind of fakey. So what I'm gonna do is on each corner, okay, so if we're looking at this guy from the corner, you can see, let's see, so if you're looking at it from the corner, you can see there's not a whole lot of gold, as not as much as there is from each side angle, you know what I'm saying? And um, so what we're gonna do is add a little bit of bling to the corners by just putting a little bit on each corner here. So. Similar to how we did on the um, each side, how we kind of feathered it off, I'm gonna do the same thing. But I'm gonna come from the center of each corner and go out, kind of trail off just like we did on the sides. That makes sense? So trail it out. Okay, so I'm gonna come in from the center. Center and fade it out. This is why I like to use an angled brush for this stuff, little quarter inch angled brush. Um, I like to, you know, if you're doing a lot of gilding wax stuff, um, sometimes a brush can get a little funky, as in like um, loaded up a little too much with product. So I usually just have a shop towel handy and I wipe the excess product from it. Um, right now I don't have one handy, so I'm using my um, craft paper <laughs> to wipe off my excess and that's fine it works it works too let me try it hopefully you can see can you see that better or not yeah can you see that okay so starting from the center and then we want to trail hold on, trail off as you go out so just you know kind of like you would like an eyeliner or something you know like a little cat eye you just trail it off your eyeliner doesn't just hard line at the end of your eye, it trails off into a little beautiful lined kitty cat eye. Ideally. I know I'm terrible at doing makeup. Terrible, terrible. I can paint all day long, but I cannot apply makeup for crap. 
for shears. All right, there we go. Okay. Okay, now I, I just need to stop now. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, so there's my corner. And I'm gonna do that on all four corners. So uh, let's see, turn around. I'll do the next corner and then I'll give you an all around look at the bling bling on this piece so you can kind of get an overall view instead of just one little section at a time. And um, I've got one more table just like this to do. I've got a coffee table to do. Um, oh, I'm gonna be gilding a lot today. I got a lot of gilding in my future. A lot of gilding in my future today. But that's okay, I like it. So it's a good thing I like it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my finger and trail it out there just like that and okay and then this side do the same thing trail it out like this that a little bit more in the center to make it a little brighter sound effects help just FYI here we go so corner number two now I got to do corner number three <clears throat> corner number three okay wipe I'm wiping the excess um, gilding wax off my brush onto my little craft paper here and Here's number three, we're starting in the middle of the corner and trail it off just like that with our finger, boom. Let's give it a little, one more time. Like a rocket, just trails off. In the, or a, not a rocket, a shooting star. These are my shooting star tables. Okay, so now on this side, we're just gonna Come over here and use our finger to fade out the edge of that line. There we go. And then now we only got one more corner to do. Then I'll give you a little walk around tour of this bad boy. All right, one more corner. Oh, okay. There we go. And just like the other three corners, I bet you can guess what we're gonna do. We're gonna start in the middle, and we're gonna paint a little corner and trail it off. Boom. Boom. Okay, and grab a little bit more wax. And then we're gonna do this side. And in case you missed my tip earlier, if you're, um, you know, I use my gilding wax a lot, so it's open a lot of the time, and so it gets a little harder and crustier than I want it to be sometimes, um, or dried up, whatever you wanna call it. Um, you can add a little bit of a little bit of mineral spirits at a time and mix it in with the palette knife, and voila, you've got nice, fresh, creamy decor wax. Like it's brand new. It's like it's a kit again. Easily take years off of your gilding wax with mineral spirits. All right, so there we go. We are all done with table number when. Table number one. Um, and look, do you remember how much gilding wax I started with? You can't even tell I hardly used any. So this is probably enough for like seven tables, eight tables, maybe even 10, I don't know. So there you have it. It uh, stretches a long way, especially if you add those mineral spirits. So now I'm gonna give you a little walk around this table. 
Let's see, I'm gonna tilt you up a little bit. Oh, not that way, over here, guys. Over here, guys. All right, so we started with our large stencil from Redesign with Prima, and we did our gilding wax stencil on the top, okay? Uh, no, that way, that way. Okay, we did a little bit of an age stenciling on top, and um, we didn't fill in all the way because we wanted it to look worn or, you know, aged. Then we did some stick and style in the corners of this table, um, and then we gilded the added moldings that we put on there, okay? And did a little bit of the trim pieces, just a little bit. We didn't completely outline it or border it. And if you're asking, if you're wondering, um, my feet here, is that is that decor wax? No, it's not. I could have used decor wax. I was afraid I would run out, so I used a gilding spray um, instead of my decor wax. I was actually just being um, greedy. I didn't want to use up all my decor wax on the legs. So then, oh gosh, don't break the table. So we're going to travel around to the other side here. And you can see we just did that same stick and style treatment to that side. And then let's see, side number, oh wait. No, how come this is turning wherever it wants to? Nope, this way, buddy. Okay, so side number three, another mold. And then the last side is our stencil. You know, side number four is just straight up stenciling again. So that is our um, gilded black and gold tables. There's one complete. I'm not gonna seal this. It dries hard and permanent color fast. Um, I will not be sealing this further. I already sealed it in two coats of Gator Hide prior to um, applying my wax. So now I just got one more little table to go. And as you can see over there, um, my little, say hello to my little black coffee table. So yeah, that's about it. That's how you can uh, add some finishing touches using gilding wax in some different ways other than just straight up putting it on just your details. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I will go back through and I'll be happy to um, answer them for you. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you, let's see, next next Thursday at noon here on the Redesign with Prima Facebook group. See you then. Bye.